You're listening to Luke's English Podcast. For more information, visit teacherluke.podomatic.com. Hello, everyone. It's, uh, it's Thursday again, uh, which means it's time for me to record another podcast. This is Luke. Hello. Hello to everyone in the world who is listening to this on a computer. Hello to you if you are listening to this on your iPod. Hello to you if you um, are listening to this on iTunes. Basically, hello, right? I think you get the idea. I'm, I'm saying hello to you. Um, no matter who you are, no matter where you come from, no matter what language you speak, you're probably trying to learn English and you've discovered this fantastic podcast on the internet and you can't believe it, right? You're thinking, I can't believe this is so good, this podcast. Why didn't I find this before? Why doesn't everybody know about this podcast? I know that's what you're thinking. And you're right, frankly. You are, you are absolutely right. This is a really good podcast. And it is amazing that nobody else in the world... I mean, it's amazing that, for example, I'm not really, really rich and really famous now for doing this. I don't really understand why I'm not really rich and famous. Well, yeah, maybe it's because this is just a little English language podcast. Hmm. I'm not exactly, um, you know, I'm not exactly Johnny Depp, am I, I suppose? Anyway, welcome to the podcast. In today's podcast, um, the subject is men and women and the differences between men and women. Um, you know, yeah, men and women. Yeah, right. So um, in uh, the feature section, I'm going to be talking about some differences between men and women and uh, a book which is called um, Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus. It's a famous book. So we're going to be talking about that. And then you're going to listen to two conversations I had, one with two of my male friends, that's Howard and Nick, and another conversation I had with two female friends. And we're going to talk about who's, who's better, men or women, and um, do we communicate in a different way. Okay, so that is um, the main section. The language section will basically be language and expressions that um, were in the two conversations. All right, so um, before we move on to that, before we talk about that, I've just um, basically would like to say that um, I've had lots of good responses about the last podcast in which I spoke to Ben about traveling to India. I had lots of uh, comments and uh, lots of downloads for that one. In fact, it's um, I think it's the most popular podcast um, so far, so that's really good. Um, let's see, I had some messages. I've had a message from Kiyoshi in Japan. And he's a new listener to the podcast. Um, and he said that he loved my photographs of India. He said he'd love to go to India some someday. He really likes the ethnic style um, that they have there, right? Um, and as well as that, Kyoshi is a musician. Um, he's a singer and a songwriter. And uh, he sent me a link to his MySpace site. So I'd recommend that you check his myspace site out you can listen to some of his music there that's www.myspace.com forward slash kyt music right i'll put a link on the website but check out his um his music yeah he's pretty good yeah he's pretty good uh, singer very talented so check it out right um let's see i had another mail from eva in poland and she said to me have you seen Slumdog Millionaire? Right now, Slumdog Millionaire is a movie which is set in India. Um, I have seen Slumdog Millionaire, Eva, and I liked it very much. I thought it was great. Obviously, Slumdog Millionaire won um, a couple of Oscars at the Academy Awards this year, um, so everyone thinks it's great. It's it's a very interesting combination of um, kind of hard reality, like the the really tough reality of life in Mumbai in the slums um, and a total romantic fantasy in which 
um, this guy searches for the girl that he fell in love with when he was a child. So it's a kind of combination between hard reality and total romantic fantasy, which works. It's it's very entertaining and very moving and very touching. Um, I've had an email from Stephen in London, and Stephen said to me, um, Luke, did you steal your jingle from the Adam and Joe show? Well, Stephen, the answer is no, I didn't steal the jingle. And for everyone else listening, if you don't understand what that means, the jingle is the little bit of music that I have at the beginning of the podcast. It's called a jingle, and it sounds like this. Now, um, on radio shows or podcasts, they often use jingles like that. And there is a, um, a BBC radio programme which is called The Adam and Joe Show on the BBC. And they use the same jingle as I do, right? Now, I didn't steal it. It's, um, it's actually an, a Garage Band jingle. Garage Band is a piece of software that I use on the Apple Macintosh computer. And uh, they have those jingles, and anyone can use them. They're free. And so I've got the same um, software as Adam and Joe. So we both use the same jingles. I didn't steal the jingle from them. But uh, I do think Adam and Joe are brilliant, and I think their radio show is also brilliant as well. They're, they're very, very funny, and uh, they're great. If you're interested, you can listen to the Adam and Joe show podcast um, if you go to the BBC website, that's bbc.co.uk, and just type in Adam and Joe, and then find the podcast, download it. It's fantastic. It's very funny. It's probably my favourite podcast on the internet, actually. Um, so I recommend that one. Um, let's see. I had um, hmm, I had an email from Hannah in Korea, and she said, "I like your logo." Um, it has a London atmosphere. Right, so the logo is the little picture that I use to represent my podcast. Um, well, thanks, Hannah. Thank you. I'm very glad that you liked it. Uh, my brother designed that for me because he is a, a website designer and a graphic designer, so he did that. Um, now, the, the picture itself is based on a London street sign. So if you come to London, you'll see the street signs and they look like my logo, right? The W6 uh, in red, that refers to my postcode and it means West 6. So I live in the west of London in Zone 6 or in, in the Area 6, I suppose, West 6. Um, the picture in the top right corner is a silhouette of my face and it's um, it's similar to the road sign at Baker Street, um, uh, uh, on Baker Street in, in London. And on the Baker Street sign, there's a silhouette of Sherlock Holmes. Okay, I will post a picture of the Baker Street sign on the webpage and you can see it. But uh, the Baker Street sign influenced me and my brother when we designed my logo. Yeah, so thanks, Hannah. I hope, you, um, yeah, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Let's see. I had... Um, an email from Paloma in Spain. She said to me, I've been to India and it was a magic place, right? She said, I want to go back there soon, but Goa is a bit touristy or touristic now. Touristy. So, yes, it's true. There are lots of tourists in Goa now. Oh, ooh. I've got a text message. Excuse me. Yeah. That's my text message ringtone. I'll check the message in a minute. Um, yeah, Goa is very touristy now. Yeah, that's true. Um, and Paloma says, thank you for the podcast. Kisses. Hmm, nice. She actually gave me kisses on the internet. Very nice. Um, okay, so um, lovely to get your messages. Don't forget to email me, uh, luketeacher at hotmail.com. I always want your suggestions and your comments, um, let me know about the podcast. How can I improve it? Yeah, How can I make the podcast better? What do you want from Luke's English podcast? Send me some messages. Let me know what you want, and I'll try to make the podcast even better than it is already. Okay, so we're now going to move on to the feature section of the podcast, 
which is all about men and women, how they're different, how they're similar and how they communicate. So here we go. Okay, Um, in uh, 1992, um, a man called John Gray wrote and published a very, very successful and very popular book called Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. You might have heard about it before, you might have read it, because it's been translated into lots of different languages, and it's uh, it's very popular all around the world. Now, the book um, is about the differences between men and women, and the differences between uh, men and women's communication styles. Now, the, uh, the book is designed to be useful for husband and wife, husband and wife relationships. The idea is that uh, if uh, men and women read the book, they can understand their partners more, and it can help them have a more successful relationship or a more successful marriage. Okay. Um, the um, the basic idea of the book is that um, men and women are different. And if you understand the differences, it can help you understand your partner, it can help you understand uh, how to make your partner happy. Okay. Now, John Gray explains the differences um, by saying that men are from Mars and women are from Venus. Okay. Mars and Venus are planets in the solar system, of course. So he says that because men are from Mars, they're different. They're like different, uh, a different race of people. And because men, uh, women are from Venus, they are also different. So by dividing the, the men and women like that, he can help us to understand the differences. Okay. Um, so I've actually got a short extract from men are from Mars, women are from Venus. So the first thing I'm going to do is read the extracts to you. Then I will um, explain some of the language um, in those extracts because the language is really good, really useful language that you can use to describe men and women, but also to describe people in general. Lots of really good expressive um, bits of language here. Then after that, we are going to listen to a conversation that I had um, with two of my male friends and then a conversation I had with two female friends. And you'll see if they agree with the book or if they agree with each other. Okay, so that's, that's quite interesting. So, um, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. I'm going to now read the passage about men. Um, um, yeah, so here we go. Martians, or men, value power, competency, efficiency and achievement. They fantasize about powerful cars, faster computers, gadgets and new more powerful technology. They're concerned with outdoor activities like hunting, fishing and racing cars and are more interested in objects and things than in people and feelings. Uh, Martians pride themselves on doing things all by themselves since asking for help when you can do things yourself is perceived as a sign of weakness. So, they will keep their problems to themselves unless they require help from another person to find a solution. When they get upset, they prefer not to burden their friends with what is bothering them and instead retreat into their caves to mull over their problems. If they can't find a solution, they do something to relax and disengage their mind. Or they engage in something more challenging, like racing a car, competing in a contest, or climbing a mountain. Okay, so that is how John Gray describes men. Now, hmm, you may agree with that, you may not agree with it. In fact, you may not even understand what he said. Okay, what I'm going to do now is just go through that extract again and explain some of the language that you might not understand. Okay, Then I'll move on to, the, to talk about women, or Venusians, as, as John describes them. Okay, okay so um, the first sentence was, Martians value power, competency, efficiency, and achievement. Okay, Martians value power. To value something 
means that you think it's important. You put a, a high value on it, okay, to value something. So men value power means that we think that power is important. Men value power and competency. Competency is the ability to do something well, okay? Like to be skilled at something, the ability to do something well. Martians value power, competency, efficiency. Efficiency is the ability to do something quickly without a lot of energy, right? Uh, Efficiency and achievement, right? They fantasize about powerful cars, faster computers, gadgets, and new, more powerful technology. Okay, uh, to fantasize about something is basically to dream ab- about it, or to have a fantasy. Right, to to dream about it. Like, for example, uh, men will fantasize about having a Ferrari, or fantasize about having um, the 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 latest. Um, iPhone or something like that. They dream about that, okay? So they fantasize about powerful cars, faster computers, gadgets. A gadget is um, a really useful little piece of technology, like an iPod, uh, like a mobile phone, um, uh, maybe, for example, something that James Bond would have, like a little piece of technology. Yeah, very useful bit of technology, a gadget. So men fantasize about technology and gadgets, okay? Um, They are concerned with outdoor activities and so on, blah, blah, blah. Um, Martians, or men, pride themselves on doing things all by themselves, okay? To pride yourself on doing something means that you feel very proud about doing something, right? For example, uh, I feel... As a man, I feel proud about doing something on my own. I don't need any help, right? I don't need any help from anyone else. I'm proud of doing it myself, okay? So men pride themselves on doing things all by themselves or alone. Since asking for help when you can do things yourself is perceived as a sign of weakness. Perceived means considered to be or seen to be, yeah? So men pride themselves on doing things alone because we don't like to ask for help because if you ask for help, it shows that you're weak, right? I don't know if you agree with that. Um, So they keep their problems to themselves, right? To keep a problem to yourself means that you don't share the problem with other people. You don't tell other people about your problem. So if you've got a problem, you just kind of, you don't tell anyone. You just keep it inside. Yeah, They keep their problems to themselves unless they require help from another f- person to find a solution. When they get upset, they prefer not to burden their friends with a problem. To burden your friends means to kind of uh, to give the problem to your friend, to burden someone. OK, um, a burden or to be burdened with something means to have to do something or have to carry something that's very heavy or very difficult. So if you burden your friend with a problem, it's like you make his life difficult by giving him the problem. So men don't like to make their friends' lives difficult. So we prefer to just keep the problems to ourselves, okay? Um, in, so we don't tell people about our problems. Instead, we retreat to our caves to mull over problems. A cave... It's like a a hole in the side of a mountain. And it's where uh, humans lived many thousands of years ago. Like a caveman, you know? Uh, When there were were dinosaurs. I mean, that's not true. But, you know, you see it in movies and stuff. Uh, A caveman is like a man from thousands and thousands of years ago. And they lived in caves in a hole in the side of a mountain, right? So um, they ret- the, uh, men go back to their cave or they go back to their room, basically, to mull over their problems. Mull over means think about it, right? So they just go back to their room and think about their problems. If they can't find a solution, they do something to relax and disengage their mind. To disengage your mind means switch off your mind. So, for example, it might be if a man has a problem... He won't tell everyone about it. He'll just go into his room 
and maybe watch some football to forget about the problem or maybe play his PlayStation just to forget about the problem. Okay? So hopefully you'll understand um, that extract from the book. And now I'm going to uh, read the extract which is about Venusians or women, women from Venus, right? Venusians. Okay, here we go. Um, Venusians value love, beauty and relationships. They find happiness through supporting and helping each other. And their sense of identity is defined through sharing and the quality of their relationships. Rather than building highways and tall buildings, they're more interested in living together in harmony, community and loving cooperation. Communication is very, very important. And sharing feelings is much more important than achieving goals and being successful. Uh, Women pride themselves on being intuitive and considerate of the feelings of others. When Venusians or women feel upset or stressed or confused or hopeless, they find relief by sharing their problems with friends and talking about their problems in detail. Right, so that's women. Okay, now let me explain some of the language in that extract as well. Okay, so uh, Venusians value love, beauty and relationships. They find happiness through supporting and helping each other. Okay, that should be easy to understand, I think. And their sense of identity is defined through sharing and the quality of their relationships. I think that's probably quite easy to understand. Sharing means giving things to other people that you have. For example, if I buy some chocolates and I say to my friends, here, do you want some chocolates? Come on, everyone, have some chocolates. I'm sharing the chocolate. I'm not just keeping it for myself, okay? So apparently women uh, uh, find happiness by sharing things uh, with each other, okay? And having having good quality relationships. So it says... Rather than building highways and tall buildings, they're more interested in living together in harmony, um, community and loving cooperation. So that means that living together and working together, operating together, not in conflict, but um, in harmony. Okay, Um, right, that's fairly clear. Um, Then um, communication is very important. Sharing their feelings is more important than achieving goals and being successful. Okay, that's that's clear as well, I think. They pride themselves on being intuitive. There there we have pride themselves again, same as in the last extract. On being intuitive. Now, if you're intuitive, it means you have intuition and it means that you're able to, um, you, you know what other people are thinking or feeling so you have an emotional intelligence so um it means if if a woman is intuitive it means she knows how other people are feeling or or thinking right okay um so they pride themselves on being intuitive and considerate of the feelings of others if you're considerate of the feelings of others it means that you think about other people's feelings okay When Venusians feel upset or stressed or confused or hopeless, they find relief. That means they they can stop the the bad feelings, right? Stop the pain, stop the the stress, find relief, yeah? By sharing their problems and talking about their problems in detail. I think that's probably quite easy to understand. So there you go. Um, That's what um, John Gray... That's how John Gray describes the differences between men and women. But um, let's see. Let's see what um, my friends think about that. Now, first of all, I spoke to Howard and Nick. Now, Howard, um, you've probably heard before. If you listen to the podcast about Whacking Phoenix, same guy, same same person. But also in the room was, in this case, is Nick. And Nick is another one of my friends. So here is the conversation between Howard and Nick. Just listen to the conversation and I'd like you to just try and understand what they're saying. Again, I'll explain some of the language that they, that they used afterwards. Okay, 
So listen to Howard and Nick. Do you understand and do you agree with them? Here we go. Oh, and by the way, this recording was made on a cassette recorder. Um, yes, that's right. In England, we still use cassette recorders. Um, it's like, you know, back in the 90s or the 80s or something here. Um, we're still using cassette recorders. So if the quality is not like digital perfect, it's because it's a cassette recorder. But I think actually that the quality on this one's not too bad. Um, so you should be able to understand it. So here it is. Uh, think a little bit closer, I think. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Speak. One, two, hello, 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 hello. Testing, testing. You right. Can... Right, right. Um, okay, so uh, I'm here with Howard and, and Nick, all right? Hello. Hello. How's it going? All right. Not bad. Right, so I've, I'm going to ask you about this book, uh, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Very I know famous that one. book. Yeah, yeah, very famous. Famous book. Now, we're, we're a bit one sided because. Um, it's just basically three blokes talking about this book, which is about men and women. So we should have uh, at least one girl here, but we don't. It's just three blokes talking about men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Now, Howard, have you actually read the book? Yeah, no, I've read about half the book. Yeah? Um, I got a bit bored, to be honest with you. Why? What's the matter? I found some of the chapters are good. Um, yeah. some, of them are, some of them are quite helpful. Because I, ha- I used to have quite a difficult girlfriend, right? And uh, she, it, it helped me to, to to deal with her. Yeah. But um, a lot of them, I just found myself turning off and not really not really tuning into what it was saying. Right. What well, Nick? Have you read it? Um, I read bits of it. I think it was uh, around one of my girlfriend's friends' houses. I think I read bits of it, and uh, I think it's more useful for women than it is men. I think I think men sort of. Yeah, it's, much, a, it's a textbook, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I think I think it, yeah. it's more useful for them to sort of understand why men do these things. So you think that it's women that don't understand men, and so the book would be useful for all these women who don't understand what men are thinking, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so we, we're okay. We understand what women. No, are I think thinking. I think the bit about um, the men um, uh, not understanding or not not giving women answers, just listening to them, is is quite a good one. I used to practice that with my girlfriend, and it actually works. I think. Really? So what yeah. is the, what is that advice exactly? Basically, you just got to um, when your girlfriend's complaining, whinging, going yeah. on about stuff, moaning about. Don't stuff. don't offer her solutions. Yeah. Just listen to her and say, and agree with her. Just back her up and say, yeah. Maybe you're right. Just listen to her, but don't offer solutions. She doesn't want solutions. It's like, yeah, yeah, I agree. Like, your boss is an idiot. Yeah, or exactly. Yeah. yeah. So what men are, you usually do is, is when they're talking about things like that, they'll they'll try and think of a solution to the problem. If there's a problem, we have to think of a solution. It's quite it's quite natural to think yeah. that way from men. But um, but we don't need to do that. No, we're not. So we just need to go. Just yeah. Listen. Oh yeah. Yeah. Really. Really. Yeah. Oh I know. I know. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Which is good. I think it's a good. Uh, Who is the book written thing? by? Uh, um, someone um, was it a woman that wrote it? No, it's a bloke. It's a bloke that wrote it. Yeah, really? well, famous like best-selling book of two thousand and whatever, two thousand one, two thousand. I think it was it was released before then, actually. Hello, this is Luke from the future. Just interrupting uh, this episode just to do a little bit of fact checking. Uh, yes, Luke from the future. This episode was recorded in two thousand and nine, and here I am recording this little bit. In 2020, 11 years later. Anyway, I just wanted to clarify who wrote the book. Uh, The book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, was written by John Gray, who is an American relationship counsellor, lecturer and author. And yes, he is a man. He's a relationship counsellor, author and man. Not necessarily in that order. And the book... Let's see, when was it originally released? Was uh, Yeah, the book was originally released in 1992. Okay, it feels like things have changed quite a lot in the last 11 years in terms of uh, sort of gender relations and and so on. Um, I wonder what this conversation would be like now if I did it again. That could be an interesting um, theme for uh, another episode for another time. But anyway, I will now let you get back to uh, the conversation with Nick and Howard. And here we go. Most of it is a bit, a bit silly. It's a bit bushy. There are there are bits in it that have some some kind of truth yeah. behind them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that, that the the bit about um, men offering solutions to problems is one of them. There's also something about uh, men being in the, in their cave, as as the book calls it. Yeah. When they're kind of uh, they don't want to be talked to, they don't want to be disturbed. 
So that, that I think there's a bit of truth in that. It's good know. advice for any yeah, I mean, any girl uh, out there. Yeah, so for example, if you're if you're there with your, with your mates watching a bit of football, yeah. you, don't, you don't really want to have a, a conversation about uh, what you're going to be doing with the mother-in-law next weekend. Yeah, it's like don't talk to me about the mother-in-law. Yeah, I'm watching football. Leave me alone. Exactly. Yeah? It's yeah. not it's not complicated. It's not complicated. Exactly. Yeah. When a man is watching football, leave him alone. Let him watch yeah. the football. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay, well, <laughs> okay. Um, uh, we we should have had uh, at least one girl here to, to balance the argument out a bit. I think, but uh, yeah, I think we sort of set the world to rights. Yeah, there. I think we so. Sorted the whole book thing out. Right. Next, what's the next? Uh, what issue? about? Um uh, why is my girlfriend always whinging? <laughs> because you're not you're not listening to her problems properly. You keep trying to find solutions. She doesn't want a solution, mate. She just wants you she to She just tell. whinges though, she's always in my ear. She just wants you to agree. Whinging, well maybe you're whinging. just not doing the right thing, maybe you're a bad boyfriend. I think that's probably, I don't think so. I think you're probably a bad boyfriend. <laughs> Considering pretty much every girlfriend that you've gone out with has just whinged all the time. And you. You're obviously doing something horribly, horribly wrong. Yeah, now. but I'm obviously doing something right as well. Do you think there's something perhaps wrong in the bedroom? <laughs> I reckon that's something to do. <laughs> right, yeah, well, well um, maybe we should stop uh, talking about that. Uh, thanks anyway, thanks for talking no to me. Cheers, mate. Cheers, bye. Okay, so there you heard uh, Nick and Howard with their points of view on the whole men are from Mars, women are from Venus thing. Um, Now, the language. Um, This episode of the podcast is actually slightly different because um, there will be no language section at the end. Instead, the language section and the feature section are combined together, okay? So um, I'm now going to go through some of the language or some of the expressions that Howard and Nick and I used in that conversation, and I'll explain the things that we said, okay? I will also write down uh, these details on the webpage so you can read them, look at the words and expressions there to help you memorize or, or understand them. Okay, so let's begin by explaining some of the things that we said in that little conversation. Here we go. Okay, to start off with, um, I said this a couple of times, and I think um, Howard said it as well. Um, Oh, whoops, that's my guitar falling over. Never mind. Um, The word word I'm talking about is blokes. Blokes. Um, So I said uh, there are just three blokes here talking about men are from Mars, women are from Venus. A bloke um, is a man, basically, and the word bloke is an informal... Um, informal word for man, okay? Now, in America, they might say a guy or a dude, but um, in British English, we say blokes, a bloke, okay? Um, So, in that conversation, you heard three blokes talking about men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Blokes, a bloke, okay? Um, Now, Howard said, I had a difficult girlfriend, and it helped me to deal with her, okay? So, this is... um, the, the expression here is to deal with something or to deal with someone. And um, to deal with something means to cope with it or to manage it. Or um, you, usually you deal with a problem or something difficult. So, for example, if, if you deal with a problem, it means that you fix the problem, you sort it out, you manage the problem, or you you learn to, to live with something that's difficult, Okay. So to deal with a problem. In this case, Howard's problem was his girlfriend, who um, was always complaining about things. And he used the the advice in this book to deal with her. Hmm. You could say that's kind of a rude thing for Howard to say about his girlfriend, that he saw her as just a problem that needed to be be dealt with. Um, But anyway, that's what he said. Um, Let's see. Howard also said... Um, when he was talking about reading the book, he said, I found myself turning off and not tuning in to what he was saying. Okay? I found myself turning off and not tuning in to what he was saying. So the first one is to turn off. To turn off. Now, we know that you turn off a television, you turn off a light, you turn off a radio, or turn on a radio, or whatever. But turn off here means that you lose concentration, okay? So it's as if your head is a TV and you turn it off and you stop listening, lose concentration. So, for example, if something is boring, 
you might turn off. Yeah, meaning stop concentrating on it, stop focusing on it. Yeah, to turn off. For example, if you're in a very boring English lesson and your teacher is going on and on and on about the present perfect tense, you know, the present perfect tense is essentially um, used to refer to actions which finished in an unfinished period of time that's connected to now, but which may or may not have been started in the past and may or may not be continuing in the present. And if, you know, if you're in that English lesson, it's probably very boring and you'd turn off, I expect. Yeah, anyway, um, the next expression that Howard used there was, uh, I found myself turning off and not tuning in to what he was saying. To tune in to something, to tune in to something, means to, to focus on it, to listen to it, to concentrate on it. Now, when you're using a radio, you tune the radio into a frequency in order to find a radio station. So you kind of do that, and then you find the radio station. That's to tune in as well. Now, if you're focusing, your, focusing yourself on what someone is saying, you can tune in to what they're saying as well. It means you concentrate, you focus on it. Okay? Um, another thing that Howard said was, um, he said, it's a chick's book. This is a chick's book. Now, the, the word there is a chick. And a chick is uh, a word that men use for a woman. Okay? So sometimes when men are talking about women, we call them chicks. And women don't really like it, actually, I think. that m- Many women think the word chick is a bit rude. Because a chick is, is like a baby chicken. I don't know. If, I don't really know why it's rude, but I guess it's because, um, um, you know, some women think that it's patronising or demeaning or negative in some way to be called a chick. So, anyway, it's a word that men sometimes use to, to refer to women, but it's, it's kind of a negative word. It's, it's an informal word, um, and many women don't like it. Like feminists, for example, um, really don't like it. They don't like to be called chicks, for example, okay? A chick's book... Um, what else? Um, Howard also was talking about his girlfriend again, and he said that she was always complaining, whinging, going on about stuff, and moaning. Okay? Now, whinging, going on about stuff, and moaning, they're all words that we use to describe complaining. They all mean complaining. Yeah? So my, my girlfriend was always whinging about her boss. Whinging means she was always complaining about her boss, right? She was always going on about her boss. Would mean she was always complaining about her boss, yeah? And moaning, to moan about something, also means to complain about it, all right? Um, And so Howard also said, um, don't offer solutions to her problems, just back her up. To back someone up means to support someone, okay? So back up your girlfriend means just support your girlfriend by understanding her and listening to her, okay? Um, Another thing Howard said, a lot of this is what Howard said for some reason. I don't know if he spoke more than everyone else. But another thing he said was, um, it was the best-selling book of 2000 and whatever. 2000 and whatever. So whatever there is the useful word. And the way that Howard used it here is that he knew that it was the best-selling book in, in a, one of the years, in like 2000 and something, right? 2001 or 2002 or something. But he used the word whatever because actually he didn't know which year it was exactly. So it's kind of 2000 and whatever. And whatever really is used when you don't know or when the information is not important or if you don't care what the information is or if you don't mind about something. It's a very useful word. So, for example, you can say whatever to mean I don't mind yeah I don't mind so if someone says to you what do you want to do tonight you can say oh whatever and that means I don't mind I'll I'll do whatever you want to do whatever means anything in that situation Um, another example might be that whatever means I don't care in a rude way so for example if um, like uh, a teacher or a parent um, is uh, is um, angry with um, his child. He might say, I told you not to do that. And if the child is rude, it w- she would say, oh, whatever. 
and whatever means I don't care, yeah? I told you not to do that, oh, whatever, shut up. It's a kind of typical thing that a sort of rude um, teenager from London would say, whatever, meaning I don't care, yeah? Right. Um, Okay, so whatever. Um, Let's see, Howard, again, said... Gay men are usually more in touch with kind of, you know, that sort of thing, I think, aren't they? Now, I think that's a great sentence for someone who's learning English. I really, really do, because really what what Howard essentially said in that sentence was gay men are more in touch with that. Yeah, but he used so many little extra bits so many extra words just to make the sentence longer so it wasn't just gay men are mo- uh, gay men are in touch with that but gay men are usually more in touch with kind of you know that sort of thing i think aren't they and i think that's a brilliant sentence if you're learning english that's exactly the kind of sentence that you you can aim to use because it basically is when you don't really know what to say or if you want your sentence to, to be longer, you could just use all of these extra little words like usually and kind of and you know and that sort of thing and I think and aren't they. So all of those are extra like fluency expressions that you can put in and you'll find that native speakers use those sorts of expressions all the time when they are not sure about what they're saying, for example. So I really recommend that you start trying to use things like usually, um, sort of, kind of, I think, um, aren't they, isn't he, isn't it, and so on. Really good. If you listen to the difference between someone learning English and a native speaker, often the difference is that native speakers use that kind of language. So listen back to the conversation, right, and listen for those bits of vague language like kind of sort of I think aren't they usually and see if you can start using them as well it makes you sound more fluent okay um, but the, the the language point there is that he Howard said gay men are usually uh, more in touch with that sort of thing so to be in touch with something means um, in this case it's to be in touch with your feelings and this means that you know your feelings you understand your feelings. You're, you're more connected to your emotions. Okay, And we usually say that women are more in touch with their feelings. Okay, um, They know what they're feeling. They, they understand their emotions more than, for example, straight men. And we also might say that gay men are um, in touch with their feelings too. They seem to talk about their emotions. They seem to understand their feelings and emotions more than straight men, for example. And straight men might be um, a little bit more uncomfortable about discussing their feelings, and they prefer to perhaps you know not talk about their feelings in a lot of depth. And they might prefer to play I don't know PlayStation Three or something. Mm. Yeah. I love PlayStation 3, actually. Um, Anyway, um, so the next thing is that Howard, again, it's all Howard for some reason. And this time he said, um, it's a bit wishy-washy. It's a bit wishy-washy. Now, he's talking about the book, and it's a criticism. And if something is wishy-washy, it means it's not very clear, it's unclear, it's imprecise, it's vague. Okay, so if something's wishy-washy, it means it's kind of vague, um, unprecise, not very clear. Yeah. Um, Okay. And finally, I said, um, let's see, and and Nick said this as well, a mother-in-law, a mother-in-law. And I said, don't talk to me, uh, don't talk to me about the mother-in-law. I'm watching football. Okay. And your mother-in-law is your wife's mother. Right, or if if you're a woman, your husband's mother. So in law refers to members of your family uh, on your husband or wife's side. So you can have a mother-in-law, a father-in-law, a brother-in-law, a sister-in-law, basically. Okay. Um, so in law, your your mother-in-law. Yeah. 
Um, so that's it for the conversation between Howard and Nick and myself. Um, again, don't forget, you can read all of that language printed um, on the web page uh, with definitions. That's obviously teacherluke.podomatic.com. Um, also, I recommend that you go back to the original conversation, listen to it again, listen to it a few times, because the more you listen to it, the more you will be able to understand and, and hear. And again, it's a very good natural conversation between native speakers, and it's something that you can listen to, understand, copy, and start using um, when you're speaking English. I highly recommend that you do that. Now, the next conversation you're going to hear is between me and two women. Because I think I thought that I needed a balanced argument, right? So I spoke to Michelle and Shirley, two of my friends, and um, basically we responded to what Howard and Nick had said. First of all, I played Michelle and Shirley the uh, recording that you've just listened to, and then I asked them a few questions and got their responses. Now, I also recorded this conversation on um, a cassette recorder. And the cassette recorder I used this time was much older, uh, even older than the last one. I mean, I think it was like made in the in the 80s at some point, right? So a really old cassette recorder. And unfortunately, the sound quality is, is even worse than the last one. In particular, there's an annoying clicking sound, a kind of click, 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 click like that. And the sound quality is not perfect. Now, I was I was wondering about whether I should put this conversation on the podcast. But I've decided that I'm going to put it on. Because even though the quality is not good, I think that the comments and the language that Michelle and Shirley have used are very good examples of English. And it's very interesting to get a response from two women. And I also thought that often, when you're listening to people speak English, or when you're communicating with people in English... Often, the sound quality isn't perfect. For example, if you're making a telephone co conversation or, or, or um, using Skype or an internet um, chat room or something, often the sound quality is quite poor. So I think it's quite a realistic bit of listening for you to practice listening when the sound quality isn't perfect. It's a bit like, you know, when you're calling somebody on the telephone. Often the sound quality is bad then, so you have to really practice listening to, to English, even when the sound quality is bad. Okay, so now you're going to listen to Michelle and Shirley and me talking about men are from Mars, women are from Venus, and talking about Howard and Nick's comments. I apologize for the sound quality, but I think it is good practice for you. So there you go. You can listen to it several times, of course, and... I will type out the whole conversation on the web page so you can read it all. Now, that's very generous of me, isn't it? Especially since I'm not being paid for this. Um, but um, I understand that you will want to read all of those, those comments that they make, and it, it, especially if it's difficult for you to understand. So I will type the whole conversation out. You're welcome. Yeah, it's my pleasure, of course. Don't forget, you can send me money if you want. You can send me money through PayPal. Uh, that's not a request. Uh, I'm not saying. I'm not actually asking you to send me money. But you could. You could if you wanted. Uh, you know, I wouldn't complain if you did send me, I don't know, hundred pounds maybe. Um, yeah, I'll let you think about that. Here's the conversation between myself, Michelle, and Shirley. Here we go. Hello, hello, one, two, three. Speak. Speak. Hello, hello, hello one, two, three. Michelle, one, two, three. Okay, so um, I thought I needed um, a female perspective on this. So I'm speaking to Shirley and Michelle about the whole thing. Um, so, first of all, what um, what do you think of the comments that Nick and Howard just made about this book? Well, I think that's probably the reason that the book had to be written in the first place, because right. of comments like that, I'd say. It's so, interesting that it was actually written by a bloke, though, that's the thing. So it was written by a man? It was written by a bloke, yeah, John Gray, I think his name was. Right, okay. Okay. Do we know when it was released? Um, late nineties, isn't it? I'm not sure actually. Okay. All right. So late nineties. All right. So um, first of all, then, have you read the book? Uh, well, I, a friend of mine gave it to me to read, um, and I was reading it when I was on holiday, 
but I got a bit bored of it quite quickly actually some mm. of it's funny I have to say some of it's funny yeah, and you can really recognise uh, you recognise yourself and, and whatever in it but mm. it just it's a bit repetitive at the end of the day and I got a bit bored with it yeah yeah I've only read about half of it as well and um yeah, I also got bored of it, and but well, some of it I started to find myself quite annoyed with women, to be honest, and found myself identifying more with men. I'm not sure what that says about me. <laughs> I'm not sure either. Does that mean um, I'm from Mars? I don't maybe. Know, I think that uh, one thing that I can say for sure, definitely, is that women aren't from Venus, men aren't from Mars, men and women are both from Earth, right? I think so, you're probably right. I think they yeah. are. Aren't they? I think that's a fair enough statement, Luke. So yeah. basically, what I'm saying is, for me, it's like a bit silly in that sense. Mm. But um, do you think it's? Do you think? Well, you said it's kind of a bit boring in some places. No, but I think it's valid because at the end of the day, men and women are different. Yeah, it's as simple as that. And sometimes, you know, you have miscommunications with someone mm. just because of the, the the different ways that you use language. Yeah. for example. Yeah. And, uh, and so I think something like this is quite valid. I mean, the guy who wrote it, as far as I'm aware, I might be yeah. wrong, is a linguist. Right. And he deals with um, gender miscommunication. Right. So, um, so it's kind of like, it's got a, a, a valid base to it, I think. Okay. Um, now, one of the things that uh, Howard and Nick uh, identified as being kind of true or useful about this book is the idea that uh, when men are listening to women, they, they often don't realise how to listen to women and that what they do is they, they offer solutions when they should just be listening do you agree with that is that true I think that's a fair point in the book actually I did identify with that very often if I've sort of got something to complain about or just something I want to get off my chest that's all I literally want to do I'm not looking for solutions I'm just looking for somebody to listen or at least pretend to listen yeah Howard. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how would you go to learn from that? But yeah. um, definitely sort of from past relationships, um, I've learned that when a bloke is talking to me about problems, especially work-related things, you know, he would, he would always want me to offer a solution. He would always mm. say, what would you do? Mm. Um, and I'm not aware that I usually ask people that kind of thing okay. in, in situations. Well, I think that is, I mean, like, if, just from listening to Nick and Howard having that little discussion, Nick seems to think that women can't make decisions. Mm. Ah. And Howard just seems to think that they just whine all the time I think we're perfectly capable of making decisions and just by sounding off and telling somebody how something that's going on doesn't mean we need you to fix it we, we can fix it ourselves right. well very often it helps you to come to your own solution if yeah you're exactly anyway. so it doesn't mean that you're weak because so you can't make a decision all right okay but essentially what you're saying is that you agree that when men listen they don't have to offer solutions they they just need to listen yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 okay okay yeah. um so uh one of the other things that they said or well, i think nick said this might be wrong I might have agreed with them as well, actually. Um, anyway, uh, one of the things that they said is that uh, it seems that the book was written for women, which means that women don't understand men, and that they said that, well, men are okay because we understand women, I think. So well, do you agree? Who understands who? From the first bit, I would say, yes, the book is written for women. Mm. And um, I don't think that a lot of men would be terribly interested in reading it. But I think that that's not just because women need to understand men. I think women have more of a, a want to understand. Yeah, I'd say yeah. that's a fair comment too. I think that they're more interested in working out what it is that's the miscommunication and trying to fix it. Right. Mm. So okay. That's Whereas what I would say. men are more interested in just... Football. Football, mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. <laughs> but I also don't like people talking to me when the football's on, so I don't think that's necessarily ah. gender thing. You see, I don't like people talking to me when I'm watching a particular programme. Does it matter if it's football or... It doesn't no, matter. I think it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. So there you yeah. go. The fact is football tends to last longer than most programmes. And, so. in, you know, and you know, it might be a controversial topic, but it's incredibly dull as no, well. No, it's not. Well, Football isn't dull, is it? It's Michelle? definitely not dull. Well, well, is it? No. It's from a noise. <laughs> <laughs> football isn't dull. Fact. <laughs> um, right, so that's it. That's all I, I wanted to ask you. Thanks very much for yes, uh, agreeing to to answer my question. That's no problem, Luke. At yeah. all. Okay. Thanks very much. Okay. Bye. Okay. So that's uh, Shirley and Michelle and their viewpoints on men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Like I said, I'm going to type out the whole conversation so that you can read it and look at the language there. And if there were things that you didn't hear in the recording, you can read them in the script which will be on the web page teacherluke.podomatic.com um, but now I'm going to just go through some little bits of language from that conversation and just discuss them now I will also write some comments on the web page too 
which will help you study, learn, copy, use the language. Okay, so um, let's see. Shirley said, um, uh, you recognize yourself in it. You recognize yourself in it, meaning you recognize yourself in the book. And to recognize yourself means that you you see yourself in it. So, for example, when John Gray in the book is describing uh, what a typical woman does, and if you're a woman and you, you read and you think, yeah, that's me, I'm like that, you recognize yourself in it. Now, we usually use the word recognize when you see somebody else and you, you identify them. So, for example, if you are, um, let's say, uh, watching television and you see your friend on television, you go, oh, my God, that's, that's, my, that's John then you recognise John on TV. Yeah, You looked at his face and you knew who it was. So normally we use the word recognise like that to mean when you see someone that you know and you identify uh, who it is. But you can also recognise yourself in something, which is when you see um, something similar to yourself, for example, in a book or in a movie. Um, Michelle said, I found myself identifying more with men to identify with someone. And that means, again, that you, you see something similar to yourself in it. For example, um, in a movie, if you're watching a movie, and you, um, a movie and you identify with the main character, that means you feel like your life is similar to the life of the main character in the movie. Okay? Um, right? So often, you know, if you're watching a romantic comedy, for example you might identify with the main character and you identify with the fact that she is lonely and that she's looking for a boyfriend or something. Now, hopefully, you won't identify yourself with something like Batman, right? Because if you're identifying with uh, Batman, now that's going to be pretty strange. I hope that none of you do identify yourself with Batman because uh, I'd be a bit worried if you, if you did. Um, anyway... Shirley said something else. She said, uh, the book is a bit repetitive at the end of the day. Now, repetitive means that it repeats itself. It just says the same thing over and over again. And the, uh, she said, it's a bit repetitive at the end of the day. Now, at the end of the day is a kind of fixed expression that doesn't really mean anything exactly. It's more just an expression which means basically or essentially or ultimately and native speakers use it a lot. We say things like, oh, um, you know, I'm a bit bored at the end of the day. And at the end of the, at the, end of the day doesn't mean, you know, in the evening. It just means basically. Yeah. So, for example, you'd say, how was the movie? You could say, well, it was a bit disappointing at the end of the day. Right. Which just means basically it was, it was disappointing. Um, Shirley also said, it's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Um, and obviously it's as simple as that just means it's simple or it's that simple so after you say something you can after that you can say it's as simple as that and it's as simple as that sort of makes your previous statement stronger somehow so for example um, football is boring it's as simple as that so saying it's as simple as that just is it's like a way of making your previous statement a bit stronger and saying, it's not complicated, it's that simple. Football is boring, um, it's as simple as that. Right? Quite a useful phrase. You can use it when you have an opinion on something. Um, let's see. Shirley also talked about, talked about miscommunications. Now, a miscommunication is just a, a misunderstanding which is based on sort of bad communication. A miscommunication. Yeah? Um, Shirley also said, the guy who wrote it as far as I'm aware, I might be wrong, is a linguist. Okay, And the two phrases there that I'd like to focus on are as far as I'm aware and I might be wrong. And as far as I'm aware means um, as far as I know, basically. And I might be wrong, well that's easy to understand. But those two expressions are used before you say something or before you give um, an opinion on something that might be wrong. Okay, so you're just kind of protecting yourself from saying something that might not be true. Yeah. So, for example, if I'd say, um, let's think of an example. 
Um, I can't think of an example. Okay, for example, um, uh, yeah. So uh, the the man who wrote it, um, as far as I'm aware, um, I might be wrong, is called John Gray. Okay. So I'm giving a fact, but I'm not sure if it's actually true. So I can say, as far as I'm aware, or I might be wrong, as a way of just protecting myself if, in the end, it turns out not to be true. Okay. So useful little expressions for fluency there. As far as I'm aware, I might be wrong before you give um, an opinion or a fact about something. Uh, Michelle said, if I've got something I want to get off my chest, yeah, so... Um, to get something off your chest means to talk about a problem that you have. So, for example, if you're carrying a problem, um, something you want to complain about or something you want to discuss, then you have it on your chest. And when you get it off your chest, you actually talk about it. You discuss the problem. Yeah. So to get something off your chest. Um, Shirley said, How th Howard thinks women want to whine all the time. To whine. Now, to whine, again, means to complain. And it's like the words that Howard used before, if you remember. We've got complain, to moan, to whinge, to go on about stuff, and to whine. And they all mean to complain about things. Check the spelling on the webpage. It's actually W-H-I-N-E. Yeah. Um, and Shirley also said, football is incredibly dull. Dull. Now, dull basically means boring. It's just a synonym for boring. So football is incredibly dull, means football is very, very boring. And that's the end. That's the end of it. Now, um, the language section, as I said, is combined with the feature section. There I've explained a lot of the language, lots of useful natural expressions used in those conversations. I hope you enjoyed them. I'm going to end with a question again. And the question will be, uh, what do you think about men are from Mars, women are from Venus? Have you read it? Um, what's your opinion on it? Do you think it's true? Do you think that men and women are different? Do you think that men and women communicate differently? What's your opinion on the whole subject? Don't forget to get in touch with me. The email, of course, is luketeacher at hotmail.com. And I very much look forward to hearing from you soon. That's the end. Take care. Bye, 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 bye. Thanks for listening to Luke's English Podcast. Don't forget you can download and listen to all the old episodes by going to teacherluke.podomatic.com.